Hello to all of my peeps. It's so good to see you here today from my chair, episode 49. Uh, I have two friends with me today. I've got uh, Lulu and I've got Martha. Yeah, Batman is standing uh, in Martha's pot today. Uh, we're so excited. My topiaries are doing so well. I'm so proud of them. A uh, very specific reason that uh, these two are joining me today, keeping me company, Martha and Lulu and uh, my beautiful topiaries. I'm so proud of them. The last couple of weeks, yes, I'm downstairs in our uh, Bryce Michael Teen Center, and I need a table because I have all my, my props and things. I, I, we're still, you're still riding with me. You're still riding with me uh, on my four-wheeler. We're having fun. Uh, we're riding fast. The wind is hitting my face. Everything is right in my world. And then, remember, uh, I rounded a corner. Uh, you remember the corner? Yes, I remember that corner very well. I remember that day very well. I rounded that corner, and all of a sudden, it wasn't all good. It was just plain old hard. Uh, take your Bibles and go to Ecclesiastes uh, chapter number 2. As I was studying, uh, once my four-wheeler, uh, I'm studying Ecclesiastes and uh, uh, paying attention to Solomon in his life and uh, a rut. Old Solomon got into a rut and so did my timber wolf. I rounded that corner and uh, timber wolf got stuck in a deep rut. It stopped and I didn't and off I went. And uh, Solomon found himself in the same place uh, in a rut. Uh, it, it's so easy to get into a rut. It, it's easy to get into a spiritual rut in our Christian lives, in our walk with God, in our service to Christ. Even as I was thinking about it this week, even in our relationships, it's easy to get into uh, a rut. Our life's calling, our life's ministry, uh, it's so easy to get into a rut. Uh, so that we've been talking through this thing of spiritual ruts. Uh, we've been looking at how. How did I get here? How did I get into this rut? Uh, we said, number one, we forget to notice the goodness of God. And uh, I'll, I'll just mention it to you. Even in the midst of sorrow and grief, God is always only good. He can only be good. He's always only good. And then we said last week, could it be, or a couple weeks ago, could it be that I've forgotten my reason? Uh, my purpose for doing what I'm doing, my motivation. So then we said, have I forgotten to notice the cross of Christ? Have I forgotten to notice the cross? The cross is my core reason and motivation for anything and for everything. Have you taken time? I, I encouraged you last week to take time. Have you taken time this week to gaze at the cross of Christ and everything that it represents in your life? Uh, I hope so. I wrote, ran across a verse this week in Acts chapter 17. Uh, it says this, For in Him we live and move and have our being. Uh, I hope and pray that you've taken some time to look at the cross, gaze at the cross of Christ. Now for this week, I'd like to address a tough subject. Uh, next several weeks, a little bit tougher subject. I take you back to my story. You like to go to my story, don't you? Uh, you're watching me. Yes, you, let, you have been leaving me lying on the ground uh, in my uh, painful, humiliated, hurting state. Uh, you're watching me just laying there. Uh, eventually, eventually, I do find my personal reason for getting up off that ground. Uh, I'll discuss that a little bit later on in, a, in another lesson. But follow me in my story. I do get up. I'll tell you why later. And uh, I walk back. If you can just picture your mind with me. I walk back to Timberwolf, to my four-wheeler. And uh, it's still running. It's still running. And yes, it is still just as stuck in that rut as when I flew off. It was not moving, it wasn't budging, it was just stuck right there in that very deep, very unforgiving rut. Uh, I'm standing there, if you can picture it, I'm standing there staring at the timber wolf. Just trying to catch my breath, trying to wrap my mind around just what had happened to me. Uh, making sure I'm still okay. But I'm standing there staring at timber wolf wondering what watch this watch where i'm going with this wondering what would happen if i just stayed there in that rut i, I gotta admit i i did i stood there 
and the thought crossed my mind, the thoughts began to cross my mind, what if I just stayed here? What if I just left it here? <laughs> it's tough. It was going to be tough. The next couple of moves that I was going to make was going to be tough, and I really didn't feel like getting back on Timberwolf. Oftentimes, we find ourselves in the same place, spiritually, physically. We find ourselves there physically, mentally, socially, uh, relationally. We stand there in our rut and contemplate. That's what I was doing. I was standing there, yes, I was catching my breath, making sure uh, nothing was broken or I think my elbow was uh, bleeding or whatever. But uh, we mull over the options. That's what I was doing. We mull over our options. Is it worth the time and the effort to get out of this rut? That's what I was doing. I was standing there. I remember it just like it was yesterday. Standing there over Timberwolf. It's still running. It's still stuck. And that thought came to my mind. Is it worth the time and effort that it's going to take to get this, this Timberwolf, this four-wheeler, out of the rut? I'd like to share some, some thoughts with you along this line. Point number two. What are some of the consequences of staying in my rut? What are some of the consequences? Again, I'm standing there and thinking to myself, hmm, maybe I should just stay in my rut. Maybe I just want to stay right here, uh, in the, right, right here where he's stuck. I, I think I just want to stay here for a little while. There are some consequences. I have to admit that sometimes we get, watch the word here, very comfortable in our ruts. Sometimes we do. Sometimes we get very comfortable in our ruts. Ruts make the journey very predictable. <laughs> if I was going to stay there, right there in my rut, stuck, that's predictable. Because I know what's ahead. I know there's just a rut. He's just going to stay right there. And I'm just going to stay right there with old Timberwolf in that rut. It's predictable. You get into a mode of life and you just go with it. Until after a while, watch this, our spiritual rut is the new normal. You look around, you don't even realize it. You're stuck in this rut, and uh, you've been contemplating it, and you just, you just get comfy there, and you just, you just start staying there. It's your new normal. The rut is the new normal. Everything in life has consequences attached to it. Uh, if uh, uh, you can't take a dog, a lot of my, you, my, my, my peeps have dogs and they live in the house. If you can't take the dog out to potty, what's the consequence? Well, he potties in the house, she potties in the house, and therefore the consequence is you got to clean it up. Yep, you got to clean it up. Everything has consequences. You do an extra load of laundry, as my, I told you last week, my strong, handsome fella cleaned the, li cleaned the living room extra for me. And there's a consequence to that. What's the consequence? Oh, the next week I went to the store and bought an extra little treat for him for his lunch. Yeah, there, everything has consequences to it. You don't do your homework. If you don't do your homework, there's consequences to that. You're going to get behind if you don't do your homework. Everything has consequences. Watch, including your, my, spiritual rut. We've got consequences, and some of them are rough consequences. They're pretty rough consequences. Let's talk about one of them today. Number one, uh, what are the, the, some consequences of, uh, of staying in my rut? Again, I'm standing there. I'm trying to figure out, is it worth it to get this thing out of here? Is it worth it? Number one, underneath this, the consequence is this cynical thinking. I want to stay in my rut. Okay, there's a consequence. What's the consequence? Well, first of all, cynical thinking. Well, what is that? It's distrusting the motives of others. It's being pessimistic. It's being skeptical, uh, scornful, doubtful, cynical thinking. One of the consequences of staying in your rut is we develop a pessimistic skeptical, doubtful way of thinking. Take your Bible and go to Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Look at verse number 11. As I was studying and reading Ecclesiastes, Solomon found himself here. He found himself thinking cynically. All right, let's look at it. Verse number 11 of Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Verse number 11. And whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them, 
I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. Then, verse 11, I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought, and on the labor which I had labored to do, and behold, <laughs> all was vanity and vexation of spirit. And there was no prophet under the sun. Solomon found himself in a cynical thought process, a pessimistic, skeptical, doubtful way of thinking in his life in Ecclesiastes chapter 2. But not just Solomon. As I was reading and studying, go to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Uh, again, I'm, you know, just it's not just an Old Testament issue. It's also the New Testament. Uh, John chapter number 6. Look at verse number 3. John chapter 6, verse 3. Something very specific is happening here. You're going to find it as we read. And Jesus, John chapter 6, verse number 3, And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there uh, he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was nigh. And when Jesus lifted up his eyes, he saw a great company come to him. He saith unto Philip, he being Jesus, saith unto Philip, Whence? Shall we buy bread that these may eat? Have you figured out what's, what the story is yet? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Verse number 7, and Philip answered, uh, Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them. That were, every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, there's a lad here which has five barley loaves and two small fishes. Watch this. Here's where that cynical thinking comes into play. But what are they among so many? I've got five barley loaves and two fishes, but what are they among so many? There's too many people here. It can't be done. It can't be fixed, God. Jesus, it can't be fixed. We just had this teeny tiny little bit, and, uh, and uh, we got to feed all these people. It can't be done. I'm sorry, it just can't be done. That cynical thinking. That cynical thinking. That's that pessimistic, skeptical, doubtful, distrustful thought processes. That's where I was. Cynical thinking. Standing there, looking at old Timberwolf, thinking, do I really want to get out of this rut? We start developing that cynical thought processes. I have another one for you. Look at Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Verse number one. And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Watch this, okay? Verse two. Now when John, the great John, the amazing John the Baptist, the forerunner of Jesus Christ, he's in prison. He's in prison. He's in jail. And uh, the great John the Baptist, look, look what he says. Verse number two, now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Are you Christ? Is this the one I've been waiting for? Is this the one I've been preaching about? Are you sure? Or... Are we supposed to be looking for somebody else? That, that's that cynical thinking. That doubtful, pessimistic, uh, uh, skeptical way of thinking. I love what Jesus did next, and we'll talk about this a little bit later on in these lessons. Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which you do hear and see. Even the great, amazing John the Baptist looked and, looked and said, You know what? I'm a little bit cynical about this thing. Is this this is this he? <laughs> is this is this Jesus? Are you sure this is Jesus? And they went and Jesus said, you know what? Go tell him again. Go tell him again. It's me. It's me. Uh, that cynical thinking. A lot of times our minds, watch this, our minds are occupied with how it can't be done. Very fresh illustration, and he doesn't mind me telling it. One of my students uh, has taken on uh, the goal of losing a whole bunch of weight. Uh, as it stands right now, he's lost 44.8 pounds in about a month and a half. We can't say, oh, it can't be done. It just can't be done. Yeah, it can be done if you want to do it. I'm so proud of him. That's a big deal. 
But we sit back in our, in, and stare at our rut and we're like, oh, I'm in this rut, I'll never get out of it. Okay, you won't. You won't. You'll never get out of it. That cynical thinking develops into other things that we're going to talk about in the couple weeks to come. But that cynical thought process is our minds are occupied with how it can't be done. I can't get this out of there. I can't get this out of the rut. Yes, you can. I can't make my, my Bible time, my Bible reading time sweet again. Yes, you can. I can't go soul winning. Yes, you can. I can't love the unlovely. Yes, you can. We get cynical in our thinking. How about this one? We get cynical. Nobody understands how I feel about this. Uh, nobody can help me with this. How do you know? How about this one? Uh, I, I, I know what they're going to say. I'm not going to talk to them. I know what they're going to say. How do you know? You're in a rut. You're in a cynical thought process that's putting you in a rut and you're not getting out. You don't want to get out of it. No, you don't know what they're going to think. You don't know what they're going to say. How about this one? That sermon, uh, the sermon this morning, that's for those new baby Christians. I've been saved for 32 years. Goodness gracious, I don't need a, I don't need a sermon on tithing. I don't need a sermon, uh, a sermon on righteousness and purity and uh, 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 all that, uh, sanctification. I don't need all that. I've been saved a long time. Read my Bible and praying. That's for the new baby Christians. You are in a rut. You're in a rut. You're standing there looking at, 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 the, at your rut, at your four-wheeler, and thinking, is it really worth it all the time and effort to get out of it? You've developed a skeptical, doubtful, pessimistic way of thinking. Why would she say that to me? Why are you trying to look into people's motives of why they say things to you? Cynical thinking. Those cynical thought processes. Let me say this. And I'm, being, I'm being, trying to be as kind as I can because I know what happens to me when I get in my rut. The longer you stay there and contemplate and think of all the ways it can't be done and how hard it's going to be to get out of it, the more enticing it is to just live there and be comfortable there. Let me just tell you, when I walked up to old Timberwolf and he's a running, he's a running, he's not going, he's just a idling, and I'm standing there uh, bloody and uh, hurting and uh, out of breath and kind of really humiliated, honestly, because I've, I've really, I've never kind of done that before uh, at a track like that and got stuck in a rut like that and, and a little bit humiliated. And, and I was thinking of all the ways, all the things and all the excuses that I could make to leave him there and me just sitting there on Timberwolf idling in my rut. The longer that you stay in your rut and, con and contemplate and think of all the ways it can't be done and how hard it's going to be to get out of it, the more enticing it is to just live there and be comfortable there. Immersing yourself in a cynical spirit is a dangerous place to be and an even more dangerous place to stay let's just be honest it's easy to become pessimistic and doubtful and distrustful and cynical let's decide watch i want to give you give you two words here let's decide let's let's us let's us decide that when we find ourselves in that space and in that frame of mind here's our two words don't linger don't linger when you find yourself being pessimistic and, and cynical and doubtful and uh, uh, distrustful uh, don't linger there uh, that's where I was standing there looking at the timber wolf telling myself convincing myself that there was no way that I was going to be able to get out of this by myself pay attention to those two words by myself because I'm going to tell you something. Somebody came walking up that path to help old Miss Edge. But I'll tell you about that later. The longer I stand there, the more I begin to convince myself that there's no way that I'm going to get out of this. You're in a tough relationship. You're fussing with your spouse. Are you having a hard time with your kids? 
uh, having a hard time with your uh, your uh, mates at work, the people that, that you're working with, you're, maybe your students at school, and you're just looking at it and you're in this rut. You're like, There's no way I'm ever going to get out of this. There's no way I'm going to come to my Bible. I can't get up early enough. I can't make it a part of my routine to read my Bible and pray. I can't go talk to so-and-so. They're going to laugh at me. I know what they're going to say. You're in a rut, and the longer you linger, the longer we stand there staring at our rut, the more comfortable we become and the more excuses that we have to stay there. A rut has some consequences. Yeah, your rut has some consequences too. It does. The first one is cynical thinking, cynical thoughts. And that leads to another very tough thing to overcome. But we're going to discuss that one next week. Well, let me ask you for this week. Are you lingering? Are you lingering in the cynical thinking? The longer you linger, the harder it's going to be to get out of that rut. And I'm telling you, the next few stages of this are rough. And once we start down that path, once we, once we start staring at that timber wolf and start staring at that rut, the harder it is to get out of it. We're going to talk about it next week. This week, our two words, don't linger. Don't linger. You have that cynical thinking when you walk into the church house, don't linger. Don't stay there. Don't stand there looking at your rut. We've got to get out. We've got to make some plans to get that timber wolf out of the rut, to get you, to get me out of that spiritual rut that we're in. And we'll talk it through this week. Cynical thinking. Let, let's, let's get rid of that stuff. Don't forget Lydia at 11 with leukemia. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we sure do love you. Thank you so much for all that you do for us. Lord, I pray that you would help us. As we, we're going we're gonna to get in the ruts. I know that. It's inevitable. But don't let us linger in the ruts help us to get out quickly and i pray that you would just help us uh, as we go through move throughout our days to, to to can the excuses and just just get with it just do what we're supposed to do and uh, to get out of that rut lord we do think of lydia uh, i pray that you would please continue to help her heal her from her leukemia in jesus name i pray amen now go be amazing today <laughs>